there was a report that came in 2011 and this study was basically done by McKinsey. There were key insights that were drawn based on this study. The first one is that data is everywhere nowadays, anywhere you see because of the advances in technology. It has become easier and easier to generate data and collect data and store data. Second one is it creates value in multiple ways. If you look at so many companies like Twitter or Facebook, Google, so they use data in so many different ways and create value and they have been very successful at it. Number three is will become basis of competition and growth for firms. Many companies, they use data and analyze data in so many ways that uh, makes them very competitive and they have grown in so many ways. Fourth one is uh, will underpin productivity growth and consumer surplus. There are so many examples where you can see how all this big data which is being generated can create value or save money and some examples uh, are given here coming from healthcare or public sector administration while using global personal location data or retail or manufacturing. Obviously, uh, different sectors have different uh, potential. There could be some areas that will benefit a lot with uh, all this uh, data and uh, use of data. And they have been grouped into different clusters, like you can see five clusters indicated in five different colors in this picture. And the size of the bubble denotes a relative of GDP. For example, you can see cluster one is information companies or computer and electronic products. So they have a big potential compared to a construction company and some other services. This is another chart called heat map. So the potential value that can be captured is easier maybe in manufacturing compared to maybe arts and entertainment and so on or government. One key insight that they developed was there will be a talent shortage so they predicted that one of the major weaknesses in the business analytics landscape availability of skilled people. And McKinsey has calculated that by 2018, US alone could face a shortage of 140,000 to 190,000 people with deep analytical skills. Apart from these numbers, they predict that there will be shortage of about 1.5 million managers and analysts. There's a huge potential in this area. It is said that uh, data scientist is one who can combine these uh, three different skills, these three different circles. So hacking skills are basically related to computer skills, if you can learn some algorithms and so on. So in this course, we make use of R for doing analysis. Math and statistics uh, knowledge is also critical because with data, you need to understand the principles of statistics and uh, how to use data or how to make data tell a story. So that is critical. And then one has to know the area in which uh, the application is being made. So if it is a pharmaceutical company or if it is an automobile company, so that expertise is obviously needed. And this comes with time. It's not obviously easy to realize full potential from all this data that uh, we see around us. There are a lot of difficulties, a lot of challenges. For example, uh, data policies. So companies have to come out with uh, data policies, uh, strategies, how they can keep it safe, how to get uh, like uh, good quality data. Uh, obviously, there will be need for technologies and techniques uh, to achieve that. Uh, there may be a need for organizational change and you also need people with that kind of talent that can make things happen they are having deep knowledge about like uh, data strategies and things like that and obviously you need access to data so for example if your company is competing globally and uh, people are talking about your company on twitter then you need access to that information or data uh, that you can analyze on a continuous basis it may also impact industry structure let me start with one small example from automobile when you buy a new car it comes with uh, a warranty period, maybe 36 months in service or 36,000 miles in service, whichever occurs first. And if any problem occurs during that period, then your car is repaired free of cost. But at the time of repair, they collect a lot of data. Like uh, what was the mileage at which failure took place? How many months in service? What did the customer uh, comment? What did the technicians uh, comment? They also have data on what parts were replaced, uh, how much did it cost, how much time it took, which state uh, the car failed. 
So, so much of data is gathered and then that data is analyzed to extract some insights that can help to improve the design of the car or manufacturing related processes and things like that. So that data is a very valuable for making uh, improvements. As you can see, if you search this on Google Trends, you'll notice that it took off somewhere between 2011 and maybe 2012. But you could link this to the McKinsey report uh, that came out in 2011 and uh, a lot of people got interested. So what is big data? Nowadays, uh, data comes in a lot of volume, like huge volumes and you have like variety of data like Twitter, you have test, text data or the data can be numbers. Sometimes it is structured, unstructured. It comes with great velocity and also it has some value attached to it. You have like embedded uh, mobile sensors, RFID chips uh, that help in collecting data. You have clickstream data. For example, if you go on Google and search for something and the websites you go to, like the clicks you make. So that data is generated and collected for analysis and making improvements on the Google website. Social media data like Twitter, LinkedIn, Foursquare and so on. So the data could be unstructured like text, images, video or audio. There are some examples like how much data we are generating. So just to take some examples here in one minute we have like 20 new victims of identity theft. That is in 60 seconds. We have uh, 83,000 in sales taking place on Amazon. 30 hours of video is uploaded to YouTube and 1.3 million videos are viewed every minute. Every day we have about 300 billion emails going around the world. Every other day we create information that we generated in last 30 years and 30 billion pieces of content shared on Facebook. So we are generating a lot of data and the metrics over time has changed. And we used to have that floppy disk drives which uh, nowadays may not be even seen. And then we move to megabytes. Uh, nowadays uh, most of our data is in gigabytes. For bigger corporations uh, obviously that's not enough. So they have terabyte or petabytes of data. So this is like uh, very soon we may be requiring more and more storage and you can see that the storage is also becoming cheaper and cheaper so more and more data can be stored for whatever purpose you you want to use that data now this is like 1960 picture where you see two people operating some mainframe computer but uh, today uh, in 2015 uh, we have smartphones that are much more powerful and you can have them in hands and operate them without a problem. So decisions and their impact. So decisions can be classified into three categories, strategic, tactical and operational. Now in a company, strategic decisions are, as you can see, lower area of the upper triangle. So indicates that uh, these kind of decisions are smaller in number compared to operational, which are much more often taken. But the impact is opposite. Strategic decisions obviously have a huge impact in terms of time and cost compared to day-to-day -day decisions. So if you look at uh, a company that came out in 1995 with a new business model and what they did was they sold a book through a website. In 1995 obviously that was not something very common. And the company remains unprofitable generating like three billions in losses. In 2001, they reported their first profit, although it was just one penny per share. In 2013, even today, Amazon.com is the world's largest uh, online retailer. That's the company that started in 95. And when they were selling books, uh, if you recall, they did not even have an option to sort, sort the books. Uh, by name or whatever like they were just listed and you have to go through the entire list one by one now if you look at this share price they have done exceedingly well over the time like growing more than 20 almost 23,000 uh, percent since uh, 95 so compared to what they had in 1995 now if you want to search for a book like lean in 
you get so much of information and not only you get information about the book you also get information about uh, what other books were bought when a customer bought that particular book and this uh, helps uh, the company to sell more books because you may find some something more interesting uh, while looking for that particular book you also get uh, other information like editorial reviews or customer comments or customer reviews you can actually sort them by most relevant or most helpful versus uh, most recent you can also comment uh, you can participate you can post your own things and all this information and data obviously from time to time gets analyzed to make it uh, better for the customer there are so many other examples where companies have benefited by collecting huge amounts of data and extracting value out of it and some of these companies uh, were used as an example in one of the popular books called competing on analytics so many companies like you see google netflix yahoo amazon so so many companies uh, they have been competing on analytics making use of data science and uh, obviously there is a huge future and i think next uh, decade or so this area is going to be very hot